I always struggled focusing. I always struggled, you know, getting work done in time. Uh, nothing works better than that. I don't care what supplement. I've, I've tried all kinds of great supplements that help or aid, but nobody was talking. Everybody was locked in. <laughs> yep. The first time I tried Brain FM, I remember taking my headphones out and saying, holy shit. I thought I worked for two hours and it was only 30 minutes. You just found the most downloaded fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world. This is Mind Pump. Today's episode, we have the CEO of Brain.fm on Dan Clark. So he gets on the show and explains how this how this stuff works. It is literally like magic. So these are sounds that you listen to that induce states of mind. And they've done studies on this. They've proven it with fMRIs. It works. I mean, the guys and I use them on a regular basis and it will make you feel focused or it will make you want to relax, fall asleep. It's pretty remarkable stuff. He gets on, he explains it. And then if you go through our link, brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you get 30 days for free. So you literally try it out. See for yourself. Pretty wild stuff. Today's program giveaway is Maps Powerlift to enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hour period. Subscribe to this channel. Also turn on your notifications. That enters you to win. Now this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, Legion. They make high performance supplements. So pre-workout powders, protein powders, supplements that can help recovery, supplements that can help with sleep. Lunar, very effective sleep supplement. Go check them out. Get yourself a discount. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 20% off your first order and double rewards points if you are an existing customer for using that link. Also, this month's program sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dan, welcome back. Thanks. It's glad been to be here. a while. 2018. It's been a long time. Over five years yeah. since we've had you on the show. So you're running Brain FM. I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. It when we first started working with you guys, it has to be. No, it is. It was the weirdest product <laughs> <laughs> by far that I'd ever used. Yeah. I I was more skeptical. And have, there's been some products I've been skeptical of, and that have like you know kind of blown my mind, and I've changed my mind. Yeah. But your your guys's company, your product, the, it, I was so skeptical. I'm like, whatever. Okay, let's see how this works. And it's really weird. Yeah. It's actually strange how effective it is. In fact, uh, we've talked about you guys probably more than almost any other sponsor without being paid. In fact, it was mm -hmm. just us bringing you guys up because of its impact. I want to know what's happened since the, over the last five years, because a lot's changed and you guys have grown quite a bit. Yeah, totally. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. Well, first I just want to say thank you guys, mm. because when I was here last, the company really just started. And since then we've actually grown significantly, which we'll dive into. We've had more than four, 4 million people use brain FM since wow. I've been on the show. Wow. And it really all started here. Mm. Um, and you guys really saw the potential for it. You saw the wacky idea. And um, it's so cool to be back here and, you know, talk to you guys about all the updates. Speaking of, of 4 million people using it, what is the stick rate on something like this? I, I imagine, you know, like us, people probably are skeptical. They experience it and yep. then they probably get hooked. Is it higher than a typical app or like how do you compare it to other apps that people would download and pay for? Like, is it something that majority of people stick around or they only stick around for a little bit? What does that look like? Yeah, great question. So. Our biggest challenge is getting people to try it because it does like even when I tried it the first time, I thought it was BS. Right. <laughs> and when people do try it, it and during the trial, we give, um, you know, someone a few days to, to do it without charging them. Right. And the more they use it, the more their conversion rate goes up. Of course. Right. So this is about three times sticky as com a comparable product in wow. that space. Wow. So if someone listens to an hour for of trying Brain FM then their conversion rate doubles. Wow. Right. And it just shows that if someone actually tries it and experiences it, um, you know, how it's intended to, you can feel the effects on your first time. Now, because of that, have you guys, uh, you know, modeled it different or marketed it different because you're learning that, man, if we could just get these people to listen to an hour, the, mm -hmm. the conversion rate's so high. So have you guys throughout the, since we've seen you last, have strategies changed on how to encourage people to do that? A thousand percent. Okay. Yeah. It's really been about one is making sure that when com someone comes in, we're explaining to them what, you know, the, the music does, but more importantly is matching them to the music that's going to be effective for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's so much stuff we can get into versus, um, you know, how someone has, um, 
extroverted or introverted, mm -hmm. right? If someone has ADHD, all these kinds of different things. So we're really trying to nail the first experience because just to get to them to that point can be challenging. You know, you're like, oh, this is just music. Mm -hmm. How is this going to be much different? Yeah. And it's really hard to tell or show someone the science because we're trying to disguise the science in, right? And when you actually get to that point and you say, oh, wow, okay, I, I'm going to try this for 30 minutes. I'm going to have work in front of me. And all of a sudden you hit, you, it like clicks. And that's what we're trying to give that aha moment in the first session. Yeah, I got So I got to, I have two experiences with Brand FM that were profound. And then I was like sold. The first mm -hmm. one, when we first started working with you guys, um, I put on focus. And at the time I was doing a lot of our writing. So we have mm -hmm. like marketing material that goes out, blogs and what we call white papers, okay? 3,000 yep. word, uh, whatever documents. And I put it on and I played it. And I remember it was about five or seven minutes in, I got I got really in the zone. Yeah. And I remember questioning it. Like, was that really yep. that? Yep. Or was it just that I got in the zone? And then I tried it again and it happened again. It took about five minutes each time. It was like, oh my God, this is really weird. Then the second big experience was one of the most terrifying uh, flights I've ever been on in my entire life. Mm -hmm. We were flying from, you guys remember Spokane, that one? Spokane, yeah. From Spokane okay. to, I don't remember where, so and we were on this little, propeller plane. Yeah, a little puddle jumper. And it was, I get anxious on planes anyway, but this flight was, like, if you didn't have a seatbelt on, you'd hit the, the ceiling of the, oh, the wow. Yeah, like, okay, that's scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, people were crying, and okay. people were praying out loud, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was really scary. Yeah. And I had my headphones on, and I was playing Meditate. Yeah. And I was sitting there with my hands like this, listening to Meditate, and I was scared, but I didn't lose my mind. And if mm -hmm. I didn't have that for sure, yeah, that would have been a total uh, panic attack. So that was, mm -hmm. that was, those are my, like, some of my first, like, experiences where I was like, okay, this is... Pretty insane. Now yeah. you started as a user and that's yeah. what got you to work with yeah. the company. How did, so what happened there? Did you have a similar experience? Yeah. So the first time I tried brain FM, I remember taking my headphones out at the end and saying, holy shit, like, what is this? Right. And to give you context, my background, right. I always struggled focusing. I always struggled, you know, getting work done in time. And what happened was I was always looking for that edge. I was looking for that, you know, flow state right? Which we call it now, right? The zone. And for me, it's this magic zone when it's like two in the morning, you've had two cups of coffee and you have a project due tomorrow. And you just like, it's just effortless. You can mm. feel like you can work forever. Right. Um, and I remember coming into Brain FM, having similar feelings like this probably isn't going to work, <clears throat> but I'll try this in the stack of all the other things. Right. And I remember taking my headphones out and being like, whoa, I thought I worked for two hours and it was only 30 minutes. And I got so excited. I was like, all right, this, like, it, oh, actually, almost like you, I was like, this might be too, th this may not work, right? Let's try to break this. Yeah. And I remember staying up for like 24 hours. I remember changing my diet. I remember trying to, like, see if I could make Disrupted. it. Yeah, exactly. Not effective anymore. And it worked every single time. And from then, I was like, I just need to be part of this rocket ship. Yeah. So let's, let's take a step back for a second. Yeah. Because... It uh, to someone who's not uh, familiar, this does sound like I, if I'm listening right now, I'm like, "What are you guys it's talking?" It's magic. About? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but but here's now if we go with the logical side, we know that music has or sounds have profound effects on the human brain. We know mm -hmm. that uh, music can improve a child's ability to learn. We know that we memorize things mm -hmm. far more effectively through music. If you were to say the ABCs right now, you'd sing it uh, because that's how we learned it, and that's mm -hmm. how we end up remembering things. Uh, music lights up the entire brain. It improves mm -hmm. our ability to do math and uh, to comprehend things and to think abstractly. So it's not out of the realm of, you know, what we already understand in the sense that, yeah, like, sounds can definitely have a profound impact on how the brain operates. You guys took that to the next level. Right. Like, mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we dealing with? What do we, are, are, are we literally trying to induce states of mind that we've identified as, this is what delta waves look like when somebody's focused. This is what mm -hmm. it looks like when somebody's asleep. Is that what you guys are working with? Because we found this in classical music forever. You've heard that. And this is why we've played it for like young kids. And it's done something significant in terms of them remembering things and uh, being able to study more effectively. Mm -hmm. But somehow like 
you guys were able to figure out the science behind that and really like hone in and and get to a level that uh, we hadn't seen before. And what like how did how did uh, originally how did they get to that point like where they could really fine tune it to where your brain responded even more uh, aggressively? Yeah, so there's a lot to unpack here, right? First is why does music exist, right? And obviously music like you know, Rihanna or whatever is entertainment, but music in the beginning was actually functional only. And teaching. So it was for lullabies, right? It was for war drums. It was to um, accomplish something, right? And then as, you know, free, as music got more accessible, it started going into an entertainment focus, right? And then um, now merging this with the studies of the brain, we're able to recognize, like you said, brainwaves, right? Beta, alpha, theta, right? And understanding that when you're in beta, you're having, that's what, that's what a focused mind looks like, right? So what we started doing um, is seeing all of the science that exists in the world, right? And different attempts of trying to elicit that. You may have heard of like binaural beats or mm -hmm. isochronic tones, mm -hmm. right? Which we can get into later, but it's really brain FM is the encapsulation of taking all of this stuff with functional music and all of this neuroscience, this bleeding edge neuroscience we have today and combining them together to elicit this really strong response. And what's happening is we're able to apply not only things that sound like you're focusing, right? Like basic stuff, like no lyrics and music, having no salience, which is the, the difference of noise, like loud bangs and stuff, right? That are distracting. But we actually go a, a, a second level or a third level where we're actually adding modulations to the music, right? And modulations are these patterns that when your brain is um, decoding music from, you know, sound to electrical impulses, what's happening is your brain is reorganizing to those patterns, delta, um, theta, all of those, right? And what's happening is blood flow in your brain is responding, right? So for work, for example, what you need to have to be more effective at work is have more blood flow in your prefrontal cortex, right? It's pretty well known. Okay. And what we're doing is we're putting patterns inside of the music that then turn into patterns in your brain that redistribute blood flow in your brain. Wait, so you're, okay, so this science is based off of uh, brain waves and blood flow? Oh. Uh, correct. Yeah. So brain, brain waves and blood flow are, are the same, right? Okay. So if you have a certain brain wave pattern, More you, blood flow you have blood flow as a result, okay. right? So a lot of the times in, um, you know, like pharmaceutical medicine, they're doing things that change blood flow. So it mm. changes the electrical Got it. and we're changing the electrical. So it changes blood flow. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And how are you, how is, how is this uh, looked at? Is it fMRI technology? Is it just? Yeah. So it's fMRI EG, right? Um, we actually have this really cool paper in pre-publication in a leading academic journal right now. Um, and it shows what happens when people are listening to Brain FM versus Spotify versus white noise, pink noise versus, you know, all of these different kinds of things. And we c you can see the brain in real time start redistributing and realigning to this hmm. this effect. So what are some of the similarities that it has with some of the, our favorite music? Like what's what's the same and what's different? Like is there obviously there's there's things that you guys have added to it because you've enhanced it or whatever, but what are some of the things are there are there direct correlations like is there a reason why there's certain music that I I, I listen to is it also because it's it's also subconsciously right. getting me more focused or yeah, it really depends. So at first it depends on the function. Like, what are you doing? Are you working? Are you working out? Right? You probably already listen to different music yep. depending on what you're doing. Right. Totally. right? We're yeah. aware of that. So the some of the, the starting points are like no lyrics, right? Because what's happening is it's kind of, um, it's energy management. So let's say we're working out, right? What we want is we want to distract ourselves from the pain we're putting on our body, right? We want to um, create like high salient songs. So a lot of people, when they work out, they listen to like rock and roll or heavy metal or yeah. EDM, right? Because there's a lot of structure to that music that's taking, um, that we're not in our, in our mind, we're kind of like out of it, right? Mm. But when you're working, you kind of want the opposite. You want to have things that are less distracting. So no lyrics, right? You want like a steady beat. Um, a lot of music today is three minute tracks because they're not made for extended sessions of 90 minutes. They're made for really still entertainment purposes. So, you know, on one level, we're doing all the 
the ob- more obvious things where all of our all of our songs are 30 minutes plus, right? Um, where cr- no lyrics in the songs, mm-hmm. they're um, they like fold into each other, so they sound similar, but they have you know these qualities that bring you into focus, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, like heart rate, for instance, like an excitement level and mm-hmm. all that. So you kind of factor that in, in terms of like, which one works best for, like you said, working out versus like trying to be calm and focused and steady. Yeah. So like you can kind of think of sound to have all these different characteristics, right? Um, one of them could be, um, you know, BPM, which everyone knows is how fast the song is moving. Right. But then you also have other things of like texture, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not a musician, right? But it's more of like the complexity of how much music is going on. Mm. So how many instruments layers, are playing right? at the same yeah. time? Yeah, exactly. Layers. Yeah. I was going to ask about that because like you've heard and we brought up classical music mm-hmm. and, uh, but too, you guys have like a section for focus, which has that uh, uh, classical music on top, but there's under underlying layers. Of, yep. I, I'm, I'm wondering. Those are the modulations. The, yeah. Yeah. So what's happening, the modulations, um, you know, maybe it makes it makes sense to take a step back and actually talk about like the first time this was attempted, right? And those are binaural beats or isochronic tones. So in, I think the 70s, right? They started becoming very popular where you could listen to this music and zone in. It was basically what we promised with Brain FM today. Mm. The challenge or, or the way it works, right? Is you play one frequency in one ear and one frequency in the other, opposing frequencies. And what happens is when you're listening to, to them in your brainstem, they combine and they make an amplitude, the difference of those frequencies, mm. right? So if you have 150 in one ear and 140 mm. in, in the other, you'll get a 10 hertz amplitude in your brainstem. Interesting. And then what happens is that um, through a process of entrainment goes from your brainstem throughout your brain, right? And um, hopefully that helps you get into focus or relax or sleep or whatever. The challenge, though, is your brainstem is like one of the reptilian parts of our brain, right? And it doesn't have like the highest resolution, basically, right? So what happens is that could take 30 minutes to work sometimes or maybe even weeks to start using this to get into that. And then when it's studied, it has sparse results, right, in double-blind studies. So so placebo plays an effect, et cetera, right? And what we're doing is we're taking the same idea where we're adding like delta waves or um, um, beta waves or something like that. But instead of doing it through binaural beats, through those different tones, we're actually pre-processing it. We're doing like a monaural beat and then we're hiding that beat in a bass frequency, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening is it doesn't go to your brainstem throughout the whole brain. It goes right into your prefrontal cortex when you start listening to it in 10 seconds hmm. and it starts ramping immediately. It's like a more bioavailable Correct. than, than <laughs> binaural beats. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great metaphor. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it works immediately and it's this, the, as fast as, you know, you hear your favorite song, you start wanting to dance to it. That's the effect. Hmm. So we're passing a lot of the ancient technology. In our Can brain. you guys patent that? Can you, we patent have it. There? Patented. Okay. So yeah. you are, so that formula is patent. So somebody else can't come and figure it. Wow. That's yeah. It's incredible. the production of music. Um, so we have like, I think we have like 14 patents t- today. Um, a lot of them are in production of music. A lot of them are on biosensors and, and um, things that we're working on in the future, mm-hmm. um, which we can get into later. But so yeah. qu- here's a question I have. Um, I, memory, uh, and experiences plays a definitely a role in how music affects us in the sense that I can listen to a, a certain soundtrack mm-hmm. of, a, of a movie. Yep. And because I have uh, immediately thinking Rocky. Right? Yeah, I'm talking about Rocky <laughs> immediately. Um, and it can it can get me motivated like nothing else because of the memory of the movie when I watched it as a kid and I have this kind of like experience that it kind of brings up in me. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I noticed that when I listen to a Brain FM track. And I find one that I like, and then I listen to it again, I listen to it again, it Mm -hmm. works better and better and better. Whereas it might have taken me five to seven minutes to induce the effect that I'm looking for, whether it's meditation or sleep or focus. And I literally have them on my phone saved. I can pull them up. There's certain ones that I might go to, and it's like 30 seconds. Yep. Is that effect, am I... Am I describing the effect that, that I'm experiencing? Is that what's happening? Yeah, so that what's really cool is you're actually describing a psychological effect called priming, mm. right? 
So um, some people, before they go on stage, they'll smell like cinnamon, sure. right? To get them pumped and to get them into that zone. And what happens is you're um, basically cueing your brain that you're about to work. That's you're about to do something. Okay. So what's cool about when you use Brain FM, you're actually, you can prime it two ways. One is the same track, mm -hmm. right? Playing. But then also if you're always using focus, you're always having the same pattern. So now you're more sensitive to that pattern, that focus pattern that we put in all of our focus music. So you're much more likely to get into flow state and to get into that zone quicker and then stay there longer. So in essence, uh, you're training your brain both ways, both psychologically through experience and then maybe even neurologically. So you're, you're developing new neural pathways that can re respond a little faster. Yeah, and then there's a physiological response because of listening to music and how your brain is responding to the environment that you're in. Wow. Yeah. Now, are you able to, um, you know, ADHD or ADD is a big topic mm -hmm. these days. Um, you know, it's quite common. You brought a statistic. I think you said one out of four people might have ADD or ADHD. So, so not ADHD, but like attentional disorders. So okay. either like ADHD or subclinical ADHD. Got it. Got yeah. it. So it's quite common. It's very common in entrepreneurs. I don't know if you know this. Oh yeah. But it's something like 80% <laughs> of entrepreneur, everybody in this room. Yep. Uh, to yeah, some extent, I'm the winner there. by far, yeah. I would say. I probably have the worst <laughs> case of it. Can you see an ADHD brain or can they identify it through the the brain waves or are they able to identify it without having to test you for your focus? And then are, and then how does brain FM affect uh, an ADHD brain? Yeah. Good question. So I'd have to ch chat with our science team to figure out if you can see it from a brain scan. Mm -hmm. But I do know that we do a lot of studies with people that have ADHD. Right. And the, you know, the stat is basically 5% of people have clinical ADHD where it actually, affects their life negatively. So they have to go get prescription drugs to, right. to manage it. Then you have 15 to 20% of people <clears throat> that have like subclinical ADHD. Okay. Um, and one of the telltale signs for that is you ever see someone bouncing their leg? Yeah. Right? Um, does anyone do that here? Uh, yeah. All the time. So you're probably in the subclinical setting, right? It's not a bad thing, but what's happening is your brain is seeking stimulation, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out how can I do the things that I need to get done, but give it stimulation. Mm -hmm. And the magic of, of Brain FM is that you're able to actually provide that. That that hertz tone that we're adding mm -hmm. to the music, the modulations, it's an on and off pulse that's kind of like both entertaining and distracting your brain. It's kind of like a fidget spinner in in mm -hmm. the form of audio. Yeah, the, the yeah. way I've heard, heard it explained is you're, you're, you're an ADHD brain or distracted brain is looking for something to keep it present. So mm -hmm. this physical feeling, you know, uh, is, is keeping me present. Are you, are you guys working with schools or, or with parents, uh, who are yeah, looking last for time you're here, I thought you said that you guys had been able to have a breakthrough in terms of being accepted as an alternative to Ritalin medications. Or medications. Is that, is that true? Uh, so we definitely are used by people that um, are trying to like lower their medications or use us before they're going on medications. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to go down the FDA route and get approved and, and mm. try to look at that. But so as you can great. imagine, it's very expensive. Red tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we said, hey, you know what? We can definitely go down this route. Um, you know, we have some really great scientists on our team and we've done a lot of studies, um, but it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money. And it would be better to figure out how to grow this thing and make the product better and then go down that route later. Um, but with that being said, we do have a ton of people, um, like if you, if you, like we said, 25% of the population right now has some kind of ADHD-like tendencies, but our users have like 60%, right? And then what's really cool is not only is it good for ADHD, but actually people with like autism or people with anxiety or all these other kinds of things that they are trying to normalize, they use us a ton. And it's really recommended by a few different organizations to support that. So, um, you, you know, focus, meditation, sleep, relaxation, deep sleep. Mm -hmm. Have you guys delved into looking at creating a, a uh, antidepressive state or a happy state or anything like that? Or is that are we getting too close to things that we don't necessarily want to touch because regulations and all that? No, I think we're open to anything. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, and, and this is this is kind of, or better word is be blunt, right? The thing that 
the brain FM needs and the thing that I need is to focus. Right. Mm. And when I came on here last with you guys, I was trying everything. I was like, this is going to change the world. Let's be, let's do this. Let's, let's do stuff in medical. So we, we were doing things with anesthesia. We were doing things in enterprise. We were doing things all over the place. And unfortunately you can't do everything at the same time. Yeah. So what it's, it's kind of ironic, right? We're, we're doing a focus company, right? And at the same time we need to focus, <laughs> but we made the strategic decision to say, Hey, you know what? Let's make a consumer product first. Let's help a lot of people. Right. And then let's, grow this thing so we can invest more resources. Um, but along the way, we found some really cool things. So we did an anesthesia study with people getting colonoscopies and endoscopies. And we found that by playing um, relaxed music beforehand and and uh, wake up music, which is like a, very, a much more intense focus um, uh, mix, we actually found we could wake people up and discharge them 15% faster. What? Right? Huh. And I was there experiencing that, like watching people get these surgeries, right? With their permission, of course. And they would wake up and they're like, I've had this done once a year, every year, because I have, you know, something that has to be watched. And every year I wake up and I'm crying or I'm like, have you guys ever got anesthesia? It's a nasty experience. It's, it's out crazy. For a lot of people, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And people would come up out of surgery and be like, completely fine. And they'd be like, what is what is this? This is crazy. So what they do is put headphones on them while they're asleep and then turn it on and let's see what happens. Yeah, we would put on uh, bone conducting headphones on them, right? And uh, put it on when they're getting like the um, the propofol, the, the yeah. anesthetic. Uh -huh. And then they'd fall asleep to it. And then when they're done surgery, they would switch it and turn on the wake up music. Whoa. And then what's happening is um, during um, anesthesia, your brain waves are basically separating. Like they're not commute, your layers of your brain are not communicating, right? And when you're waking up, what's happening is you're kind of like loopy. They have to reintegrate, right? Yeah, they have to reintegrate. So what's happening is we're giving it a, a leading pattern to basically huh. like, um, yeah, to follow, mm -hmm. you know, and we help organize the brain so it, it can be more coherent faster. So you're not drunk for like 30 minutes. Wow. Um, so that was really cool. And we found um, a lot of, you know, opportunity there. And uh, we're still in the process of that, but obviously there's tons of red tape and we want to make sure we do it the right way. Yeah. If you've ever, I mean, for parents who've ever had a kid that's gone under, it sucks when yeah. they come out because yeah. they're just inconsolable for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's the integration of the brain waves, which I didn't know. I thought it was just, they're just disoriented, but I guess, of course that would make you feel. Well, that's yeah. interesting. It makes me think about uh, coming out of like a, a, an ebriated sort of state, like in terms of anything, like, you know, if I'm drunk or if I'm you know, under the influence of somehow to kind of bring me back in, I wonder if there's something there. There might be. I've never personally tried that, but yeah. I'm sure some people have. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I'm not like the money. I'm just saying. That's, yeah. yeah. Have you it's guys? Interesting. Have you have you guys done anything with like uh, intimacy? Have you have you experimented with that or done any studies on that? Because Adam don't, has. Well, I mean, <laughs> so I don't know if you know this or not, but yeah. I, not long after you, we had seen you Track last number time, five. I shared on the <laughs> podcast one of my experiences with it. Well, it's become well, I've done it many times now, but one of the craziest, coolest things that I've done is put focus on with my wife before sex mm -hmm. and it's like the intimacy level is like and what i what i attribute that to and maybe you you can add to it or whatever explain it better is i think we all are we live in a very distracted time with our phones mm -hmm. and tv and stuff like that and i think it just kind of drowns all that out and then it becomes with just her and i having great conversation and yep. then and then when you're in the moment it's just i don't know it helps it helps with that become even tighter and closer have you heard anything or know anybody yeah yeah so um that's a, you nailed it that's exactly what's happening we're okay. so distracted what's happening it's making you present and you know that could that, like our primary focus is for work right but there's a lot of these really unique experiences and um for a long time one of the highest referrals for brain fm was actu actually a tantric sex blog ah, right see. because because <laughs> Wait, a blog that would send people to you because it said listen to this and yeah they were their number yeah. one uh resource for um ah, helping people like wow. connect right and there's a lot of again there's so many things that's the hard part um you know leading the company is there's so many things that like this story yeah let's help you let's help all the people like you yeah but for right now we're like okay Let's have this primary focus yeah, first. Low hanging fruit first. Exactly. And yeah. then grow into it. Um, that's that, you know, that's a really cool story. This other really cool story um, we have, and this is more on the focus front, but um, there's this one woman that contacted us and she's like, Hey, I just want to thank you for the last five years. And her story was that she was a student trying to be a lawyer 
and she couldn't focus. And she was in a, she's, we're worldwide, right? So she's in a country she couldn't get Adderall. It's, it wasn't legal for her, right? And um, she said she found Brain FM and all of a sudden she could get her work done, right? And then she became a lawyer and she was a lawyer for several years. And she's like, but then I wanted more. And she, she's like, I'm writing this to you as a judge wow. in my country. And I owe it all to Brain wow. FM and the thing that you're able to give me. Wow, um, that's it, remarkable. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Crazy. It's 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 something that I never imagined. Yeah. And then on top of that, what's what's also really cool compared to like nootropics or all these other um, consumables that are like coming up, is that a lot of those you can become um, normalized to. Yeah. You know, like you drink coffee and all of a sudden you need two cups and stuff, but because this is a by a lot like your blood flow and how your brain works, you can't normalize to it. It's something that actually just strengthens in time rather than gets weaker. That's my experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you use a stimulant or a supplement that helps induce focus, your brain down regulates receptors and mm -hmm. changes its own catecholamine production to bring it back to where it was before. And like you said, you need more and more and more. This, the more I've used it, and I've used it now for years, it works faster and easier every single time. And so it's almost like, I, I think it's, it's like strengthening bike, yeah. and creating neural pathways, um, yeah. you well, know, through that process. We've, we've been mostly talking about the focus, but I feel like the most profound one is the sleep. I mean, what's going on there? Because I, that's something that I, I use that more consistently than anything else because we travel so much or we have speaking engagements where my adrenaline's going like crazy. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things to do is to be, you know, away from home in a hotel after a long, crazy day of work to be able to like Put settle, yeah, yeah, settle down and actually go to sleep. Uh, nothing works better than that. I don't care what supplement I've, I've tried all kinds of great supplements that help or aid, but I think nothing helps more than the brain. What is going on there? Is it, is it mostly helping with deep? Is it helping with REM? Is it helping with all the above? Like what's, what's going on that's helping me sleep? Yeah. So, uh, it's similar process where we're taking music that sounds, you know, is slower is, is bringing your heart rate down, things like that. There's all these wonderful studies to show that, um, you can take regular existing music and change someone's heartbeat. Right. Mm. Um, and you're not changing it wildly, right? Not 100%, but you can change 5 to 10%, which is a significant difference, right? So we're doing things that sound, you know, like like peaceful, right? And then we're adding in our technology to it, right? And um, as an effect, you're getting these really long, slow wave delta waves that we're, we're adding to it, right? And um, when we started, we did um, a lot of research in sleep. Our main thing is really driving focus right now. But um, we saw that we were able to increase um, slow wave sleep, which is where you get, you know, the deep recovery and have spindle activity in the brain. Um, so the idea is um, you're actually getting a more restful sleep. Um, and it, you're listening to this um, in two ways, either one to help you fall asleep or the entire time you're sleeping. Yeah. Um, and we find that like some of our most dedicated fans um, they're, they're like using us for sleep every single day or they're using us for focus every day. And it's yeah. really interesting that people gravitate towards one or the other. Yeah. You know, I, you're, I want to just, this conversation is making me want to go, Doug and I have been like really diving into our, our sleep and like with our aura ring and trying all these different things to keep improving the score. And I actually, what I haven't done is actually consistently done it for my sleep at home. I always use it when I know I'm like going to need it. Like I have to have it because mm -hmm. I can't. I use it on the plane. Yeah. Like stuff lot, like yeah. that. I'm using it where I actually haven't tried to see like, Oh, what happens if I actually use this every night at home and see if I can improve my sleep score? I, I'd like to see what that would do. That's I've, we've had listeners uh, talk about using it on their pets. Yeah. So they'll play it I've done in that. the room mm -hmm. because their dogs are, what, you know, yippee or whatever. Anxious, and like, yeah. It works on the pets too, yeah. which yeah. is kind of weird. Not that your product's made for pets, but. Yeah, we, we get a lot of really interesting use cases for that. Um, you, you can also do some really cool stuff when you combo the activities together. So um, we're tr we're actually building this in our app because we've had so many people that listen to like focus and then relax and then focus again. Oh, or they do they do they're listening to sleep and right when they start in the morning they put on focus to wake them up like a sleep and wake mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and it's very interesting because when you have maybe more depth of control over guiding your brain into certain states, now you can start playing with it and. Personally, when I do focus and I'll do relax and then I'll do focus again, I can reach a level that is 
entirely higher than I can normally do. So we find a lot of people will listen to relax first for like 30 minutes while they're like brushing their teeth and they're doing their thing. And then they put sleep on. Yeah. And it's like a really nice interesting down state mm. and then regulation into that yeah that's interesting how are you these studies that you're talking about these are you guys put these together and fund them and and say okay how are these working um so we are we're not funding them all by ourselves because science is incredibly expensive yeah um, so that, that's why i'm asking because i know what the cost is it's insane yeah so um like uh so our, our study that we're doing right now that we've been working on for the last several years is actually funded by the national science foundation so we got a very large grant from them um, I think uh, a quarter of a million dollars from them to help fund. So that was um, a huge chunk. What's that and looking at? Can you say? That's for yeah. That's for ADHD. Oh, that's, I see. That's the specific um, ability to see is this a um, uh, uh, not a cure, but it's more of like, like is a this viable treatment? Correct, a viable treatment. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and it's that's the thing that's allowed us to do fMRI and and do partnerships with. Uh, Northeastern and and really look at the brain on a um, a level that you can't do commercially. Yeah. Now, you know? off air, you were mentioning something about dementia and Alzheimer's. Can you talk about those a little? Yeah, of course. So we're not doing these studies, um, but it's the same technology that we're using, which is um, mod modulations or a amplitude modulations. And what's crazy is at MIT, um, a doctor, Dr. Sai, right? She's been doing a lot of studies on dementia and Alzheimer's, right? And what they're doing is first they would do this in actually rodents where they would play um, a 40 hertz modulation. They put light and sound and they were able to show that these rodents brains that are built to have basically Alzheimer's, um, it reverses, right? And then they did this on humans. And to be fair, they did this with uh, only 15 people, right? It was a, it was a starting of a study, um, but they saw that 15 out of 15 people that went through this and were listening to modulations like an hour a day were actually reversing Alzheimer's and dementia. Wow. Um, and, you know, crazy. And just today, something came out where they are, um, for cancer pa patients that are going through chemo, a lot of them experience brain fog and disorientation. Uh, obviously, it's a very intense treatment. And they're doing similar things where they're playing modulations to them and they're seeing that that reduces brain. I don't fat. know if you know mm. the answer to this, but are they testing the Alzheimer's and dementia and showing its reversal through symptoms or through looking at the brain itself and saying, okay, it's looking different? Yeah. So they are doing like in the, the reason why they do rodents and things like that is so they, they can actually dissect the brains right. and they can see differences in plaque and all these what? kinds of things. Wow. Um, it's really interesting because the, I believe the theory, and again, I'm not the scientist, yeah. but I believe the theory is you have these neurons in your brain, right? And then underneath your neurons, you have something called microglia. And what happens is that microglia, um, kind of gets blocked, mm. right? And that's where plaque buildup happens and things like that. And the microglia, um, they basically, um, they function on a 40 Hertz modulation. They turn on and off, right? Uh, like from a wider thing. All of our body is just on and off. Our muscles, our brain, everything, right? And if you are um, playing a 40 hertz modulation, the microglia kind of start um, activating and start pulsing at the same time. And it will actually like clean off that plaque, right? That's probably not as technical as it needs to be. But the idea- That's an interesting theory. Yeah, the, the idea is that this basically is, is kind of like, almost like- um, like a plunger for a toilet. Well, it's like, pump, like pumping a muscle or yeah. flexing mm -hmm. a muscle. Things move in and out of muscle mm -hmm. every time you flex and you know relax or, or contract and relax a muscle. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. What does your typical user look like? You you mentioned one stat. You said about 60% uh, of your people would say they have ADHD-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. Are there any other statistics in terms of what the typical user uh, looks like? Yeah, so we have, um, I guess, two types of users. One are people that um, are trying to deal, or, or not deal, but like better manage maybe anxiety or trying to perform, right? At a, at a level where they're like, okay, I have, I, I'm anxious about, you know, all the work I have to do, or I'm anxious for this. So I'm going to use this for planes, right? Like, um, in addition to your story, we get stories like that all the time, right? So we have a lot of people that are trying to like, um, look for almost like, um, a pain medication to, to solve an ail that they have, right? And then you have other people that are looking for like pure performance. So they're like, all right, I'm already working eight hours a day. How can I work, 
you know, 15 hours in eight hours? You know, how can mm. I stuff as much as I can? How can I lift 10% more? You know, um, so we have these really two different archetypes of people. Um, some of them have ADHD, some of them um, have anxiety, some of them have sleep problems, um, you know, but in the end, we're, we're able to be, it's, it's really unique because whether you have ADHD or some kind of neurodivergency or you're more normalized, it works on everyone, oh. right? To different levels, of course. Um, and our paper that I was alluding to earlier, we found that people with ADHD that, that share that they do, this, um, this modulation is kind of like a dial. We can actually turn it up or turn it down. And if you turn it up on someone that doesn't have ADHD, it will, it will give you a headache, right? It's too much. It's too much. Mm -hmm. But for someone with ADHD that can handle more stimulation in their brain, you can dial it up even more and they can perform to a higher degree for longer. So actually in the product, we responded to that and we have like neural effect level. And that's what that is. So oh, you, can so you can gauge it, right? Yeah, so you can pick your intensity of the hmm. effect, right? Wow. Any any um, sports teams using this? Do you know or that you know of, like that are implementing it into the, like their training routine and stuff? Do you know? Um, I don't know about full sports teams. Yeah. I know some athletes have reached out to me and said, "Hey, I use this all the time for an individual basis." Um, I've had a lot of. I have had more conversations with like billionaires than I ever thought I would because <laughs> people are like, I use meditation every single day to go on a walk. And it's the way that I can just focus and clear my head and do the things that I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've had probably four or five people just reach out and they're like, I just want to have a conversation with you. Is is the technology <clears throat> being used? Is it similar to, are you familiar with like Halo? Did you, do you know the, the Halo technology? It's like the headset that you put on for training yep. and it's supposed to help with like training patterns and to help solidify. Do you know if that's similar, the science that you're, that they're using in that compared to what you're doing? Do you know? Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think of the acronym. I think it's like, TCPS or something. It's it's basically like it's transcranial. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. Simulating something. Thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> little little dyslexia on my side. Um, but like uh, it is different. So what's happening is that is doing that's kind of stimulating um, through electrical, electrical impulses yeah, in a different way, okay. right? Where you know we're doing it, you know, through sound. Through sound. Um, there's there's so many different ways you can you can you know stimulate the brain you can do it through magnets yeah. you can do it through um, transcranial stuff you can do it through touch through light through sound and the reason why we pick sound is because it's one of the senses that you can always um basically we all already are already listening to things it's the easiest thing to it add feels to more anything. organic to me yeah exactly <laughs> and the interesting thing right um is that there's really no harm in it, right? If you put your music on too loud, it can hurt your eardrums. But when you talk about all the different way, other ways you can stimulate, it actually can get dangerous. And even just like light, there's, um, I don't know what the, the exact number is, but I think it's like one out of 16,000 or something have epilepsy, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were doing this through light, yeah, which we can do the same effect, yeah, yeah we, that's dangerous, yeah. right? Plus it's also with sound, I can do other things. Exactly. So yeah. if I have to focus on something with my eyes, I can't write or read, mm -hmm. whereas if I listen. By the way, last time you were on, we asked you if this worked through speakers and not just oh, through headphones. Just the same yep. thing. And you were like, no, put on headphones. And I got to disagree with you. Yeah. Like, I put it on speakers <laughs> it and it works, works fine. Yes. I have, I, well, now now I have an answer to that. Yeah, uh, better. Because I. that's what I thought. That's what I was told. Okay, because and when you said that, I'm like, I wonder if he's, he has to say yeah, that. Right, the FTC <laughs> yeah, right. Because all of us have tried it through speakers yeah. and it works just fine. So I think when last time we were here, we... I, I didn't have the the five years of people telling me the same exact thing you okay. did. And what happens is all of our studies are with headphones. That's okay. Yeah. So so I can say, hey, 100%, like if you use headphones, you're going to have the optimal experience, but you can still use it over speakers. Yeah. And it actually just depends on if you're listening to focus, relax, or sleep. Because focus is really high, fast modulations. So you can bounce off things in the room and things like that. Um, but relax and sleep are really slow. So a lot of people that use us for sleep, they just put us on their phone next to their bed yes. or they put speakers That's on like a Bluetooth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have wonderful effects. Um, it really comes down to your environment. Like if you're, if you're in a noisy environment, the best thing you can do is put sound canceling headphones on, mm -hmm. put some, you know, focus on and go. But, um, it's, it's really for everyone. Like however you want to use it to get the effect, 
is how you should use it. So you are getting you know? a lot of people who are saying it works with three yeah. speakers, not yeah. just us. I mean, yeah. I did an experiment <laughs> you guys aren't just crazy. my okay. kids, yeah, and putting it on while we were all kind of doing our own thing and they were studying and doing their homework. Yeah. And it was like, nobody was talking, everybody was locked in <laughs> yeah. and it was just, it was humming. And I'm like, there's no way that this is just coincidental. You no. know? And then we did it again and the same effect. So yeah, and it was just broadcast over the Bluetooth. Yep. And we're used, a lot of like teachers reach out to us and they're like, we use you in your class, in our classroom mm -hmm. to help people study and focus. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of there's really cool, cool things. There. So with yeah. something that's this, uh, strangely effective, um, I'm always thinking to myself, like, how is this technology? How are people using, are you, are you know, <laughs> Will it any, for evil? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, isn't, wait, isn't, didn't Hitler do something with sounds in order to like, didn't he? I don't know. I don't know. Did, about, did, didn't you know he, that he did everything? I mean, no, he did yeah. something like with the, the cadence of his speeches and music that he would play. You guys never heard that? How do you guys, you guys are all well, the historians. Well, I mean, here. I don't know, but I do know that there are Look that up, Doug. certain cadence and certain frequencies that we've identified as like, I know that the Catholic Church has identified certain frequencies. They have certain weapons and things that they broadcast into crowds of people to... Even like know, preachers are known to have, like some of your best well-known preachers are known to have a certain cadence yeah. and stuff like that. Well, my, my question is with this technology, because this is like another level, mm -hmm. um, do you know of any of how it's being used outside of this? Or is it because it's patented they can't use this because I would imagine like an advertising company would be like, we want to make people feel a particular way when they see our commercial <laughs> yeah. or yeah, a movie or something like that. Better. Yeah. Has that, has, has that crossed your desk? Has anybody asked you guys? I've had many interesting theories cross my desk. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, I mean, so one is, is um, uh, the technology itself is patented, right? So, um, if, so they wouldn't be able to unless they went through guys. I mean, Yes, but people could do it anyway, and then yeah. we have to, like, you know, police and stuff like that. Um, but the interesting thing is this isn't an a, effect that is, like, brainwashing, right, or or anything like that. So this is kind of like um, if you listen to a song, if you listen to an ad, it one, it doesn't work immediately, right? It takes, you know, a few seconds. But it's also, like, remember that dancing analogy where it makes you feel like you want to dance yeah. when you hear a song? Can you still stop yourself from dancing? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's more. It of, depends because Footloose, this guy can't stop. So uh, it's on, it's, I could see that. Yeah. As yeah. As you put it on, it's over. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's it's one of those things where um, it's something yeah, that uh, we you know it's it's more of this continual progress. It's an aid. It's I think of it more as when you're running and you have a wind on your back and it just makes it mm -hmm. feel easier and you're having a great run. Um, but it's not necessarily going to pick you up and carry you yeah. on your way. We can't play it and make you a zombie. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Yeah, Subliminal messaging is actually something that started in like the 70s, this idea. Yeah. And subliminal messaging has been largely disproven because you have to be a willing aid to like want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like some hypnosis that mm -hmm. exists, you have to want. To be they have hypnotized. to select. Actually, I've, I've actually yeah. looked into yeah. that. They have to select. They take a crowd and then the see person, who's most susceptible. Yeah, and then they'll and then pick they that one person. On like them. this yeah. person is most likely for it. To work yeah, on or whatever. Um, are you guys using AI technology oh, to yeah. fine tune the sounds and how it works, uh, either to the individual or just to uh, just as a general product? Yeah, so we're we're spending a lot of time. I mean, AI is really great. It still can't make music yet. Yeah. Um, all the music it makes, you can tell an AI made it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, what we do, our process right now is actually like humans that design all the music. They make it sound like we have an amazing uh, music team. Right. And what they do is they try to find diverse sets of music that they can build and create like a soundscape. And then we put that into an algorithm and that basically helps us make a soundscape that is 30 plus minutes. And we actually have this really cool pattern that we just got. And it actually can take any piece of music and loop it infinitely without it ever repeating. Oh. So we have seven hours of Backstreet Boys, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> um, we don't have it on our platform. It's um, called My Personal Hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you guys. Uh, no, don't. don't do <laughs> but but like the, the idea is like um, our thing is like how can we make humans focus on art and how can we um, have AI and all these um, different kind of algorithms focus on um, all the science, making sure all the things are tuned correctly, and then um, making the experiences uh, match what you're looking for. Yeah, I had a question. So, like, in terms of, like, your data and user base and all that stuff, do you guys find that certain, I don't know, I guess, different areas of the world are are, are listening or, or 
prefer certain songs versus others and like mm-hmm. you know what does that look like yeah so we have probably the most population density in the major cities um you know i told you what before i told you that people are looking like what the person looks like as far as anxious or or looking for performance but how they look like you know as a regular person is we have a ton of entrepreneurs right we have a ton of people that are really trying to optimize their time and perform at their best daily because they need to yeah. right um so as you can imagine you know tons of the major cities have that um as far as you know who's using focus first relax or sleep um it's very interesting because when you kind of go into suburbia you're finding a, we find a lot more people are using relax mm-hmm. um and that, those are people that are you know, relax or sleep. Um, those are people that, you know, those are people more fast paced. Those people that have and, kids. Yeah. yeah, most likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, relax. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, we had this one woman actually that reached out to us and she's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she's recording a video for us. And um, she's like, I haven't slept in like 15 years. And I've tried Lunesta. I've tried Ambien. I've tried all of the things. And I'm actually really upset that I just found out about you guys last week. Cause I've been sleeping like a baby the entire time. She's like, thank you so much. And please like tell more people about you because yeah. I shouldn't have to find out after, you know? Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people like, you know, they have these struggles and they're like, how can I find something that's safe, something that's effective and something that like, you know, there's not really a downside. Do you, you know? so you guys have musicians that, cause, cause when people, when you listen to this, if you haven't experienced this, there's music. Underneath that are the modulations that you're talking about you that are it. inducing the effect, but it's yep. music that's playing, and you can totally. hear, you can kind of, you know, hear the oh, modulations. Hear yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but it, there's there's so you have musicians that make the music, and then do you have musicians that make the modulations, or is that computer derived based off of a formula? That Those are computer it? derived. Yeah. Got so it. so to dive into that, we have all different types of genres because the genres aren't really the the important thing. It's actually. The, the modulation, the modulations. You got it. Right. So we have like nature music, you know, like all the things you'd right. you'd hear. We have um, lo-fi, classical, like all that stuff. So what we look for when we hire musicians are people that just have obscene talent. Like most of these people toured the world with some of the greatest, right? And they're like, listen, I love being a musician, but I don't want to go on a plane anymore or, or a tour bus. I just want to have a family, right? Mm-hmm. But I still want to make music that that can help a lot of people, right? Or or a lot of people enjoy. Um, we have this this one guy on our team. Um, his name's Derek, right? And he used to do. He's he's this guy, right? He's he's an amazing musician, and he and I were just doing um, a yearly review, and he made this year over 150 tracks for Brain FM. Wow! Right? And he's like, this is more in this year than my entire music career ever, wow. right? Because he's just like in the zone and, and and creating these things. So he he and the other people on the team are making these really amazing pieces that you would find like scored in a movie or something like that mm-hmm. to like a really good quality. And then you're right, we're basically making all of the um, different kind of brainwaves and patterns that we're putting into it. It's derived from a model or derived from, you know, fMRI data or something like that. And that is um, baked into the song. So it's like a line to the beats per minute. So it's disguised in there. And you can still hear it a little bit. You you can kind of need to hear it still. So you yeah. got to find that balance. Mm-hmm. Um, but then basically we're, we're checking all the boxes where it sounds good. It, it it's something you actually want to listen to, which is really tough. And then it also has these effects that we know from all of our papers and all the science that we've done and other people have done that is going to drive that effect. In the so brain. are the, are the, the, are the modulations then this, like if I'm listening to sleep and yep. I, one day I listen to the rain yep. and then the next day I listen to the ocean and the next day I do the forest one, are the modulations the same on all those and it's just what's layered with it that's different or do they change also? They change too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they have to fit inside of the sound, right? Uh, because sound is the carrier wave for the, the modulation. Yeah. You, like for example, um, let's pretend that you have uh, a, a, a deep a sleep song and it's probably like, I don't know, like 100 beats per minute or something like that, right? Maybe less. And what's happening is if you if you have the modulation for 100 beats per minute versus 90 beats per minute, it has to stretch and it has to transform into that uh, thing. Or Otherwise, it sounds distorted. It sounds computery. Mm. So that's one of the reasons why we don't take 
like a popular song and just put modulations in it. Sure. We have to make our own music because otherwise it would sound um, choppy. Yeah, like you know when it, you know the helicopter effect in the car. Yeah, right. It's kind of annoying. That's kind of the effect that we're hiding, and we're we're like mm -hmm. that's what's driving it. It's a little bit more rhythmic and pulsing, but if we do it wrong, it'll sound like that. It has it'll to be palatable. Distorted. Yeah, it has to be palatable. You know, it's something that like like healthy food is healthy for you, but you have to you can't force yourself to eat healthy. You have to find that balance. Yeah, you yeah. know, and that's what we're we're really trying to do. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, where are you guys based out of, by the way? Uh, so we're remote, actually. Oh, yeah, wow. Pandemic changed the all whole of team. that. Yeah, whole team. Yeah. Oh. How, big is, how big is the staff? Uh, we have 15 full time and a bunch of contractors. Um, and that's made of developers, um, designers, musicians, neuroscientists, mm -hmm. um, and marketing. You yeah. uh, Before we started, you were, we were talking off air and you said something I think is a really interesting fact. I think it would be a fun single topic episode for us. And that was that your morning routine is making you less productive. Yeah. And I think that's a real controversial statement with you know all the books that are out there. I would imagine reading. you get really yeah. into the science of all productivity because of the product that you make. So totally. what did you learn about these morning routines? Yeah. So, you know, the whole study of flow is a really, it's like a new evolving um, study that a lot, or a lot of um, interest there, right? And flow is this finding the zone, right? Um, and there's this idea of, um, of uh, flow proneness, right? which mm. is the susceptibility you have to switch into flow state, mm. right? And if you look at your brain when you're sleeping and you look at your brain when you're in flow, it's actually pretty similar. So this idea that your morning routine, you're doing red light therapy and you're you know, having smoothies and you're going on a walk and all that stuff, the, it's actually taking you further away from being able to drop into flow state um, instead of waking up and sitting right down and immediately It's working. crazy how obvious that is to me that I never thought about that. Cause it, I mean, you've ever, have you ever seen too, like the, uh, the studies like on your like super athletes, like a, a Steph Curry, mm -hmm. when he's at the line for a free throw, it's a, it's the game is on the line. He's got two free throws. He's got to hit both to make it. They, and they, or like the, the downhill skier who hits the jump and has to do six flips or something crazy. Yeah. They measure their heart rate, mm -hmm. and their heart rate is like they're sleeping. It yeah. actually goes down. That's what makes yeah. that's like the biggest difference between us and then those super athletes is they have this ability in those moments yep. to be so calm and so focused mm -hmm. uh, and in flow state like that. And yet here we are doing all these things like cold plunges, and mm -hmm. we have all these things that jack us up in the morning, thinking that's the better way to get us focused for our, a day of work. Yet it's probably going the opposite. Yeah, I mean, I think the secret is actually finding the balance between them, right? So personally, I do that. I wake up and I grab a coffee, a protein shake, and I sit down and I immediately start working, mm. right? And the way I can do that is before the, the night before, basically, I plan out my day so I can go right into it. But personally, if I do that every single day and I just work for eight hours and you don't have any recovery or relaxation time, you're going to burn out. Sure. So I think the secret is actually starting immediately trying to get into the zone, immediately trying to work and then working for like 90 minutes and then doing the cold plunges ah. and then and using those as recovery modalities to be able to then go back into it afterwards. Mm. Because if you don't have, you, you guys know this, like if you don't have recovery, yeah, no. you don't have anything, no. you know? Very, that's a, it's an interesting mm. uh, way to look at it. I, I, I know uh, for me, that's definitely true. I can get into a very quick flow state, but then after that, I'll go work out mm -hmm. and then I'll come back and then I feel amazing yeah. uh, versus just, you know, I know what, for one thing, uh, social media upon waking is a terrible idea. <laughs> yes. That, that for sure I've, I've identified as not a good way to get the day started. There's also really interesting studies. I, I'm, I'm not sure if these are academic studies or just uh, things, so I won't quote anything. But um, there's this idea that when you are adding anxiety to your system, what happens is your brain is starting to like prepare for it. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up and you sc start scrolling social media and you're spiking your cortisol, what happens is it's starting to train your brain on waking up earlier and earlier and earlier mm. so that you can actually be prepared. Ready for that anxiety. Uh, yeah, exactly. So a lot of people that are, are doing that are actually, you know, if you find yourself waking up earlier and you have that pattern, 
it's probably from the social media. What you do in the morning definitely affects what happens later in the day. I mean, the totally. data on uh, consuming protein upon waking and how your blood sugar is affected later mm -hmm. with the same foods, everything's controlled, is much better. Sunlight in the morning affects your sleep 100%. in a positive way. So yep. this makes perfect sense. So do you think upon waking, playing... Focus. relax and then focus or focus and then relax? I think right into focus. Yeah. So personally, I'll wake up. I'll, um, I try to, it sounds crazy, but I try to sit down at my desk in, in literally two minutes. Um, so I, I try to get out of bed. I go in, I grab water, I grab protein. I put headphones on, I put brain if I'm on and I just trying to get into it. Wow. And, um, you know, I think it's interesting because when you look at people that are really successful and they they're doing this they're not you know Elon Musk you know love him or hate him he's not screaming about his morning routine every yeah. day yeah, yeah. you know yeah. he's getting stuff done you know yeah. and i think um it's just interesting so i encourage everyone to to experiment try it yourself mm. if it works adopt it and if it doesn't that's okay any future studies you're you're looking forward to potentially conducting um so there's a lot of really interesting things that we're doing with wearables um, you can see I have two of them on right now. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're still, I think, you know, when we first started here, we we're telling you that workout music was coming, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's still coming, <laughs> but it's, it's tough, right? Yeah. There's a lot of things that have to do. There's so many different people that have different kinds of workouts and different kinds of bodies and of things course, like that. Of course. Um, and we found that the only way to really effectively do it is actually hook up wearables. So, so you can see in real time what's going yeah, on. Yeah. So what we're actually trying to do is build better neurofeedback through music. So we'd actually change the, like right now, the basis for music is, is all, you know, um, pitted in all this research for, you know, people across, you know, what all these brains look like and focus, relax or sleep. But the next level of brain FM, um, is that we are able to look inside of you and see your HRV yeah. and your GSR. How sick that would be. And be able to, yeah, to Imagine change Imagine getting alerted time. from your aura ring that's just like, hey, you should probably meditate for 15 minutes. Or just minutes adjust or, in real time. The yeah. music yeah. just yeah. changes. Yeah. We would yeah. change in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be sick. Yeah, so we, we've, we've been playing with a lot of that. There's some really cool stuff um, that we've been able to do um, that is probably too early to say, but um, it's, it's something we're still working on. And I'm really excited to see that turn in because like the, the vision is being like, imagine someone that, you know, they want to perform at work, right? They have kids at home and they're like, okay, I want to, I want to get this done. And they're trying to sit there, tr trying to work. And all of a sudden they click brain FM and they, they get in the zone. They have a great day between, you know, on time and relaxing and they're heading home in the car. They yeah. put on relax. Yeah. And they're and we're we are knowing this person needs to be down regulated, and we're we're looking at your your um, HRV and your GSR, and those are all really good indicators of you know your mental state. They, they can all be determined from that. And then imagine that you arrive home and your kids come out, and you're like fully present, and you're recharged, and you're there, or you're with your wife, and you're mm -hmm. you want to be intimate, and you know. It's so hard to shake off all the things that happen in your day and you can actually just be f fully present and fully aware and enjoy all the different parts of life that, you know, we're here for. You know what I mean? That's totally. the vision that we're are, trying to do. So you said over 4 million people have, have used Brain yeah. FM. Uh, do you, how many are, are currently active? Are you able to say that? Uh, so we keep these numbers uh, like kind of like as far as current sure. subscribers and things like that. But we have more than uh, 300,000 people that are using wow. us per month. And um, it's all over the world. How do most really people cool. find you guys? Uh, is it through marketing or word of mouth? Right now it's word of mouth. Wow. Um, and we're transitioning into marketing. Um, and that's that's why we're back here. We started here with you guys. Yeah. And now that we're jumping into marketing, the first people we wanted to sponsor was this show because of where it all started. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. well, like I said, I wouldn't, if I didn't try it, I wouldn't believe it. It's really weird, but yeah. you guys have an option where people can try it out. Yeah, so they can totally. See themselves. It is, str it's, it's, it's not powerful. effective. Yeah. It's strangely effective. And I say strangely because it's, you're in disbelief <laughs> <laughs> when you use it the first few times, like, really? Is it really that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What's going on? So we definitely advocate for it. And like I said, we've talked about you guys so many times, even without being sponsored. So appreciate it. Yeah, love, love it. it. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thanks for coming yeah. on, man. Awesome. It was great.